So I'm going to take you through the process of handling a system design interview question. Actually, the process you, you take to design any system and take note of the six steps you have to apply when handling system design. One of them, the first step is identify functional requirements, identify non-functional requirements, identify your API endpoints, identify your database and your database schema, then caching and precaching and performance, then scaling. There are six of them. I repeat, write them down. I also have a list of them in the description of this video. And I'm going to take you through these six steps as we design TikTok. So the first one, identify the functional, re functional requirements. Number two, identify non-functional requirements. Number three, identify your API endpoints. Number four, make a choice of database and outline your database schema. Number five, caching, precaching and performance improvement. Number six, scalability. Okay, so let's do this exactly this way uh, using to design TikTok. And another thing you need to know is once you follow the six steps, don't mix up drawing the architecture with identifying these six things. Because once you identify these six things and outline them, your architecture simply derives from them. So somehow actually listing all these things and also drawing at the same time, that's not the best way because that is kind of going to make things clot out of a bit. So let's identify all these things, then putting up the architecture diagram will simply be easy because you are going to derive from this, the things you already identified. Step one, we talked about functional requirements. So that is the first one. So the functional requirement is simply how will the system work? How will the system function? And there are many, many functional, functional requirements for, for a system. So in this case, the ones you are going to list, you have to clarify it with your interviewer. In this case, we are talking about TikTok. You can actually mention that, okay, TikTok is a video sharing uh, uh, system. And it means that you should be able to upload a video and you should be able to view a video. Users should be able to like a video. Users should be able to comment on a video. Users should be able to follow other users. So these are the requirements you have to actually list them down as you are identifying them. So I'm going to write them actually as I say them. So I'm going to say upload video, upload video, number two, follow user, right? Number three, like a video, like a video number four comment on a video on video number five should be a uh, money profile so in this case you have to clarify with your interviewer do i include things like this in my design but for now, for completeness, let's in, in, uh, include it. I don't know if TikTok allows for resharing a video. I don't know. But for now, we have upload, follow user, like a video, comment on a video. We also have view timeline. Okay. So there could be many others you identify, but for now, if you identify up to five or six functional requirements, clarify, cr clarify with your interviewer is perfectly okay. So listing so many of them will amount to waste of time, wasting of the interviewer time, because there may be other things he might be interested in. So once you've listed out six functional requirements like this, we are good to go to the next one. So number two is non-functional requirements. So the second item is non functional requirements and this is where you talk about latency for instance so we want to make a trade-off between latency and availability so we are going to just mention them latency and high availability highly available 
So this is a trade-off has to be made between the two. What does this mean? Highly available means that video once is available, you don't want to allow downtime. So what it means is if the video is being played by a user or viewed by a user, you don't want it to be uh, to switch off or maybe go offline. Latency, you have to, in this case, when a video is being uploaded, there may be some delay between when a video is uploaded and when it is available. So this latency, you have to kind of trade off between, between the two. So once there's this little delay, the video has to be processed and made available once. So this is a trade-off that has to be made here, but we actually favor high availability to low latency. So you have to explain this to your interviewer. And this system should be able to scale. So you should be able to scale in terms of number of users per day or number of uh, users that joins the system per day. So this is where you make certain estimates in this scalability. You can say, talk about how many users does TikTok have? How many videos does a user upload per day? So you can say, let's say 100 uh, million users, uh, two videos per day, per day, per user. Uh, you now mention a user should be, a, a video should be able to maybe 30 seconds, the length of a video, or maybe 30 seconds to one minute. You also talk about um, the size of a video as well, so you have to do all this estimation on the scaling. Um, so, yeah, so these are a few uh, functional requirements you have to uh, take note of, okay? Non-functional, I mean, so the number three item you will need to go, up, go to is the API endpoint. So what this means is for a user to interact with the system, he has to go through an API endpoint. Now in system design, you don't worry about UI, like what UI application or UI technology to use. You don't do that. Um, so you talk about the API endpoint. So let's go to number three, API endpoint. So, as I mentioned, once you identify these things, the next one follows from what you already identified. That is why this pattern of system design is actually the best. To upload a, a video, you should provide an upload endpoint. So, you should have an upload endpoint that says slash upload. Upload video, for instance. Then you have a follow endpoint, uh, and that is going to be slash follow. Now, you don't have to detail all the request response schema, for instance, but you can actually mention that the upload endpoint takes a video, a video metadata, like the description, the timestamp, and sends it to the upload, uh, through the upload endpoint as a post. And then we have a follow-up endpoint, takes the user who, who um, is following, and the user you are following, and then with the timestamp as well and upload and send it. So you want to explain a little bit what goes through all these endpoints. Again, we have the comment. Okay, so comment endpoint takes a video because users comment on a video, right? So you have you, the user ID, the video ID, and the comment string and the timestamp as well. Slash comment and slash profile. Now this is a completely different service, so you may not want to get into the details of profile, but you want to tell the interviewer that uh, users can manage their profile via this endpoint, right? So this is where you get your username, get your user details, account info, uh, account details, and so on. Um, so you also have slash like. Again, this API endpoint will uh, actually provide information for us to build our database schema, okay? Okay, so now we have identified the number of endpoints. Let's now go to the database schema and uh, choice of storage technology. Now one question you are like, likely to encounter is what kind of database or storage technology do you want to use? The first thing you want to know is that once you want to store video data, 
uh, you likely will store it not in a relational database. You have to store video in a blob storage, binary large object. And we are choosing this because a video is not like um, a structured data that you can query or you can uh, search by string. So the actual video is simply a large object that has to be placed in this blob. And Amazon provides S3 buckets to handle that. And for relational data related with this video, like user details, um, video metadata, comments, and like information, like details, user profile, then you have to use that in a relational database. So in this design, we are combining use of blob storage with an RDBMS system. So you want to clarify that in terms of choice of schema. Uh, so that's, well, I'm going to go to the fourth one. So for, I'm going to say DB choice. Okay. So now the database choice, I'm explaining to you why. Now the user, might, the interviewer might ask you, why do you not use something like NoSQL, like MongoDB or something? You want to explain that data from the uh, a video feed, for instance, user data and comment, they are structured data and it provides, um, we have to perform queries and have to perform joins because like, follow, comment are all relational uh, amount to relational data. They relate to themselves, so there will be a bit of join and uh, relationships. So in that case, we need to use a relational database. So you want to explain it this way. For NoSQL, like MongoDB, or which is the document store, uh, we are not storing blogs or we are not storing documents. So we actually don't need to use a NoSQL database. So this is my argument, and this is also an argument you can also present. So I outline choice of database, we now talk about the schema, okay? So the schema now we want to talk about the table structure for the user, for video, for comment, for profile, for um, this is a different thing we are going to talk about. So in case of user, so I'm going to outline user's table. User's table, so we should have a user ID, we should have um, user data okay so we have user id i hope i'm not going out of the board <laughs> so we have user id and user data and we also have videos video table so now the video table that's going to go into the relational database will contain the video metadata for instance the description the time the user id and other necessary information and the URL to the blob uh, location of the video. So you need to clarify this. So we have video ID, we have user ID, we have URL and we have uh, meta data. So one thing you might pay attention is they may be asking you what is data types of these items. You want to say something like the IDs should be UUIDs, uni, um, universally unique identifiers. But you can also say the auto, inc um, auto increment or um, identity field, but I think it's safer to, to use U UUID for the IDs. So now we talk about comment, uh, like. Now the like can actually be stored in the same table as the user data. So like videos, you can say, all the videos you like can actually be placed inside the table of the user data. But the principle of normalization highlights that likes and all that information uh, should be placed in another relation or table completely. So we want to separate the like information into another table. So we have to provide likes, likes table. And what is going to go here, we have the video ID you like, the user ID of the person that liked it, and the time. So have user ID, video ID, and the time. Okay, so, so this is what we have. Then when we have comments, uh, very important, because comment is similar to this, uh, so we have comment table, we should have the video ID, 
I hope I'm not going out of the camera. <laughs> we have a video ID, we have a user ID, we have a comment. Okay? These are the comment symbol, and also you have the timestamp, the timestamp for the comment. Okay, so we mentioned that the next one we want to talk about is the performance using cache and pre-cache. So this happens at this point. So I'm going to just call it um, so this is number four, number five uh, performance. Now, if a user gets into the application, he's greeted with a list of items, his timeline. Now, this our, our timeline or user feed or video feed comes from a recommender system that recommends the, the videos the users might be interested in. So these are videos collected from posts, videos of posted by the users that this user is following. So if you are following five person, maybe you are, we are selecting the videos, the first two videos from these five people. So meaning 10 videos is going to be selected. Now, if you always carry now this recommendation, this uh, selection by querying the database every time, it's going to be a performance problem because there are many uh, millions of users. So we actually want to cache this information, this timeline or video feed in some cache. I think we can use uh, Redis, for instance. Um, so we have the, uh, the video, video feed, feed, cache. So we want to cache this video feed, pre-compute it, and cache it so that when the user logs in, he has it immediately. So for each user, you want to have this video feed available in a cache so that it doesn't have to be always selected from a database every time. That is about the caching. Um, when I draw the architecture, I'm going to clarify this a little bit more. Then if we go to number six of the six items, we talk about scalability. So in the case of scalability, what happens when so many people uh, get into the system at the same time, possibly to view a video? There are three, uh, three things that can be used, or three technologies that can be used. We have load balancing, LB. We have CDN. We have load balancing, and we have CDN, and we have sharding. So you want to use this. So where do you use the load balancer? When the user is trying to reach to these APIs, you want to place a load balancer here because these APIs will be coming from several services that have been scaled into many instances. So we need a load balancer in front of this API that is going to uh, distribute the load across the services. In that case, we should be able to uh, scale up or down by adding more services behind the load balancer. CDN means that we have the content delivery network. You want to distribute these videos to different locations. So if you have somebody from the US, uh, thousands of people trying to access video from there. So you have a video cached in a CDN location in the US. And then in that case, those users from the US can get the video from that place, uh, that CDN. So we should have a CDN as well somewhere before the load balancer. Sharding is another point. So sharding is a way to split your database horizontally. Uh, you can say database is split into regions. So uh, all the data from this region is placed in one database um, um, cluster or node and several other people in this region. So it's a horizontal um, scaling uh, uh, technology that can be used to distribute or partition your database. In this case, it makes it easy to index uh, videos from particular locations and it improves performance. So I'm going to be talking about more of this uh, in the next part of this video when I'm going to now draw the architectural diagram of this uh, system design. For now, I'd like to thank you for viewing. Uh, remember, if this has been informative for you, please subscribe to my channel. And let's see in the next part, and we are going to now do the full architectural design of this system we've uh, discussed. I remain time to on the tech pro, and we'll see in the next part.